Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for character sheets and like and subscribe to come to the coast. Have a few laughs next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building John McClane, the Mario of movies. He's a blue collar working stiff who does his best to rescue a woman who doesn't seem to like him all that much. Also, Die Hard isn't really a Christmas movie, it's just set during Christmas. I know that me putting this video out on Christmas Eve makes it seem like I'm agreeing with the Christmas movie folks, but I'm not. I'm just exploiting them for views and calling them out to stir up arguments in the comments. A bunch of people shouting over arbitrary things that aren't important? Now it's starting to sound like Christmas. yippee ki -yay. Two lock subscriber. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to be a tough motor falcon with enough endurance to step on glass and keep on going. Next, we need to be a heck of a shot with ranged weapon skills to put the herd on any baddies. Finally, we'll get some detective skills. Sometimes you gotta find the Gruber before you bust them. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that your dexterity is good enough for multi-classing. We'll kick things off with constitution. You don't have a superpower, but if you did, it would be your ability to take a beating and keep on pushing, almost like you're unbreakable. Dexterity next, shooting is your main method of taking down foes, and I don't remember a scene where John busts out a claymore. Wisdom after that, you need to know when people are lying, and have sharp eyes to look for clues as to what the ne'er-do-wells are up to. Follow it up with intelligence. Investigation is an intelligence skill, and you do a fair amount of that, even if you're not the most book-smart guy on the force. Strength is a bit low, you're pretty athletic, but you're not really throwing cars or anything, and will dump charisma. Your wife, kids, co-workers, and pretty much everyone who meets you dislikes you. I don't think saving large groups of people from an egomaniac is a sustainable love language. John is a human. Humans get feats. And when you walk on glass with your feats, that's pretty tough. So I'll take the tough feat, which will give you 2 HP for every level you have and every level you get, helping you endure office holiday parties, even ones that get attacked by Alan Rickman. Bump your constitution and your wisdom with your two free points, take deception for your skill of choice to bluff the villains, and athletics and insight from the city watch background. Athletics is a pretty good skill, and your insight is going to be really important early in the build. We'll kick things off as a rogue, letting us grab four skills from the rogue list, like investigation, perception, sleight of hand, and stealth, all of which will help you maneuver around Nakatomi Tower undetected. You get expertise in two skills of your choice, go for insight and sleight of hand so you can see through the fake accents, and hide a gun behind your head. It's pretty specific, but it could come in handy. You also get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 of damage with a ranged or finesse weapon attack when you have advantage on the attack or an ally within five feet. Hopefully your allies aren't stuck on the ground floor, rogues tend to work better with backup. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action, helping you duck back behind cover if you find yourself in a firefight, or just to bail on Honestly, it might be the right move if you're outgunned. Third level rogues get to choose a roguish archetype, and inquisitive is the best way to figure out who the head boss is and then how to take them down. First, you've got an ear for deceit, meaning the lowest you can roll on an insight check is an 8 before you add your modifiers from expertise and wisdom, meaning that you can really cut through the baloney. It's pretty hard to do a John McClane build without swearing, I'm not gonna lie. You have an eye for detail, letting you search with a perception or investigation check as a bonus action, helping you spot ways to use the room to your advantage. Most importantly though, you get insightful fighting, letting you contest your insight against your enemy's deception skill as a bonus action. If you win that contest, you can use your sneak attack on them for a minute as long as you don't have disadvantage on the roll. John doesn't win by being the biggest dude in the fight, finds clever ways to take his opponents down, which will work nicely with 2d6 sneak attack damage. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement, bumping your dexterity up will help you get better aim. Even if insightful fighting helps you get the sneak attack on, you still need to hit them first. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you reduce incoming damage by half as a reaction action as long as you can see the source of damage. Pairing this with tough, it can actually make a rogue a fairly solid tanking class. And you get 3d6 sneak attack damage here to make sure you're still sending out the pain against the people putting your family in danger. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Let's go for investigation and perception to use your eye for detail with a better modifier, making you a little sharper than the average henchman. Seventh level rogues get evasion, meaning you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. It's not a diehard movie without at least one good explosion, preferably with you swinging or jumping or walking away virtually unscathed. Your sneak attack also bumps up to 4d6 here. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Keep getting that dexterity higher to land virtually impossible shots when you really need to. Ninth level inquisitives get steady eye, giving you advantage on investigation and perception checks if you only use half your movement that turn. You probably just want to creep into the room as you're more than likely outnumbered. Unless your son is there, but we don't we don't talk about that movie. We can talk about 5d6 sneak attack damage though. 
10th level rogues can cap off our dexterity modifier to make sure that we never ever miss consistency is really important hey that will segue nicely into the 11th level of rogue for a reliable talent meaning the lowest you can roll on skills you have proficiency with is a 10 before you add your modifiers which means that all your expertise skills are just pretty much automatically successful nakatomi might be a really bad day for you but honestly probably should have been a lot worse 66 sneak attack will also make things go a little more smoothly 12th level rogues get an ability score improvement or a feat crossbow expert is what we generally use for guns because i don't know if your dm is going to be cool with guns in their setting but crossbows go everywhere this lets you fire at melee range without disadvantage you can fire multiple shots in the same round with a crossbow without having to worry about the loading property and fire another shot as a bonus action after you take the attack action so you can shoot twice with what is essentially a handgun keep in mind you can only use sneak attack once per round but you can use this to fish for crits john seems like he'd be into fishing he's kind of a basic bro let's bounce over to fighter now to get a little bit tougher first level fighters can choose a fighting style archery will add two to your attack rolls with ranged weapons meaning that you get to add seven plus your proficiency bonus and almost never ever miss unless we get riskier then you might but that's later you also get second wind letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest just find a bathroom hide out for a second you deserve a break every now and then Second level fighters get Action Surge, letting you make two actions instead of one in one turn once per short rest. Keep in mind, this doesn't include your bonus action shot, but that's still three shots in one round for three chances to double your sneak attack after a critical hit. Hey, remember when we segue nicely into the 11th level of Rogue? Well, we're going to segue now into the third level of Fighter, where we can choose a martial archetype and champion pairs really well with Rogue, thanks to Improved Critical, letting you critically hit with a 19 or a 20 and double the chance to get a 12d6 critical hit off. Now that's what I call kill difficult. Wait maim challenging what's the movie called fourth level fighters can scoop up another feat sharpshooter will help you maximize your damage with every single shot taking a negative five penalty to your attack roll to add 10 to the damage of a shot you can fire at maximum range without disadvantage and ignore all but full cover honestly if i'm your dm i'd let you shoot through a table just some good advice for you fifth level fighters get an extra attack for two attacks with your action four attacks with an action surge and five attacks with a bonus action hand crossbow shot with one sneak attack that's 11 d6 plus 75 damage with a doubled chance to crit now you have a machine gun ho 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 six level fighters get an ability score improvement letting you bump your constitution for plus 18 hp at this level since your hp scales retroactively helping you hang in there just a little bit longer while the fbi does honestly nothing on the ground Seventh level champions are remarkable athletes, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to strength, dexterity, and constitution checks you don't have proficiency with, which would include initiative rolls, making you ready to go at the drop of a hat or an executive. Either or. Our capstone is the eighth level of fighter, letting you cap off your constitution modifier, making you the beefiest rogue we've ever built. Actually, maybe Jason Voorhees. Forget Freddy vs. Jason, where's the A Good Friday the 13th to Die Hard? Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you can pump out the damage with rapid fire shots, great range, and huge bonuses from critical hits. You're also a very hard guy to take down with over 200 HP and ways to reduce damage thanks to evasion and uncanny dodge. Finally, you've got the skills to pay the bills with a bunch of skills from Rogue, reliable talent, and expertise to get things done before the bullets start flying. For weaknesses, none of your damage is magical, so some of the bigger bads or ghosts could give you issues. You're also lacking charisma, meaning that talking your way out of things isn't really an option. Finally, your strength isn't great, so grapples and shoves could be an issue if you're fighting on the roof of a skyscraper. But considering all the damage you're putting out, I wouldn't worry about it. Unload bullets, frustration, and outlast all the swarms of henchmen that the big bads are sending at you. Just watch out for a charismatic enemy. They might hands you an L. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make new videos every day this month. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.